of the Umoji Circle. My name is Keith Smokey Johnson. I would like to welcome you to something I think would be a good and interesting discussion. I was motivated to do this show by certain events that I came across uh, in the last couple of months since the previous show. The first one was uh, <clears throat> uh, something that uh, happened to a brother, famous brother, you might f be familiar with him, that brother Kevin Hart, who was attacked by the Egyptians in Cairo for making the statement that the Egyptians were black people. Now, I don't know how much uh, study the Brother Hart has done on the topic of the ancient Egyptians, but I could tell you from my years of doing this show and the information that I've come across that somehow uh, seems to have been missed by the, uh, the Arabs that who have run Egypt in the 21st century he was absolutely correct in what he's saying. And I want to uh, bring some points during the discussion to back up what Kevin Hart said. I don't know if he has all this information, but he has the correct information when it comes to how uh, the Egyptians looked at themselves, how they looked at others, how did the Greeks looked at them, and how did the racist uh, educational system, the racist system here in uh, the West, uh, looked at them, trying to capture them for themselves. And just like the Greeks and the Romans, they wanted to say that the Egyptians had nothing to do with Africa, which is a bold-faced lie and has been proven for many decades, which you're going to find. Uh, the second one was a little controversy that started up with uh, Jada Pinkett uh, putting together a movie about a black uh, Cleopatra. Whether or not she was black or not, um, uh, where she, she's a descendant of the Greeks, uh, Ptolemy um, family, but nobody really sure what, what her mother was uh, uh, because a lot of the so-called pharaohs of that time, even though they were Europeans or white, um, had concubines and they had, you know, black concubines, concubines from all over. So that's her complexion is questionable. Uh, and personally, uh, she's not one of my favorites. Uh, 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 Egyptian queen, but she at least defended her African country, all right? I'll leave it on that. But to me, she would have been most likely uh, uh, a dark complexion, okay? And then I'm going to talk about uh, how why we shouldn't even focus much on that, but that's the controversy. But another interesting um, controversy that I found uh, that also had me saying, why are we still dealing with this, whether the Egyptians were black or not? It, it has to do with this brother that I'm going to uh, let you listen to on a video clip, a short little video clip about his having to deal. He's an Egyptian who came to America in 1978 and, and listen to what he had to deal with, uh, just uh, trying to get his citizenship back in 1987 and after that. He lives in Detroit. He's a, a brilliant professor uh, that's still alive, uh, Dr. Uh, Masafa he Hefni. Just listen. Uh, I am a black Egyptian. My father is much darker than I am. My mother is lighter than I am. Uh, in Egypt, people are identified by the religion first, not the race. So in Egypt, if you are Christian, you are a minority person. But if you're black, you're not a minority person. You are a part of the mainstream society. And I came from this background. And uh, in Egypt, you identify as Arab and as Muslim. And in this country, when I first came, I identified myself as Arab American and Muslim first. And gradually, I became, to, I became to identify myself as black. I came to the US in 1978. And I became US citizen in 1985. When I, became an, when I became a US resident, I was told by the Immigration and Naturalization that I am white. And I told them that I am black. And they said, no, in this country, you are white. All Arabs in this country, all Arab immigrants are white. I didn't pay much attention in the beginning to this because in the Arab world we identify with our ethnicity first as Arabs and, with, and then with the race second as black or white or whatever. But in this country you identify with your racial group first and then with your ethnicity second. Gradually I became black first and Arab second. 
And I rejected my white classification publicly for the first time in 1987, in February, as a panelist in a function sponsored by the Association of the Study of Black Life and History in Detroit. Uh, I said that I belong to two minority groups. I am Arab American and Black American, and I am racially black and ethnically Egyptian. I was harassed by my employer right after that. I work for a white school district. The superintendent is white. All the associate superintendents are white, even though that we provide services to 30% black population. Uh, but the organization is white, and the approach is very white. The attitude towards me changed completely after I went out publicly and, 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 and rejected my white classification. Uh, one coworker came to me and told me, a white coworker came to me and told me right after the function that he met with the superintendent, and if I don't keep my mouth shut, my educational career is over. He said, you have nothing to do with these people. You have a history and a culture. These people came from the jungle. They have, you have nothing to do with them. These people lie and steal. When I see one of them in my neighborhood, I call the police. And I was told by the director of general education, who is retired now, uh, in 88, I was told by him that I get people angry when I say that I'm black Egyptian. If I just say that I'm Egyptian, I would get along. I have to add that I was denied promotion twice because I chose black classification. This is part of my two lawsuits against my employer, which are currently pending, two lawsuits. Now, uh, just for our, the education of our viewership, why don't you share with us uh, a breakdown of Egypt as it is today, insofar as blacks or uh, combinations thereof of European descent and what have you? We don't have, we don't have Egyptians of European descent in Egypt. We have a population which is basically the inter, uh, which is basically a mixture of ancient Egyptian blacks who intermarried with Arabs right after the Arab conquest. The ancient Egyptian population was brown and black before the Arab conquest. But, but before the Arab conquest came the Greeks. It was ancient, the ancient Egyptian population was in Egypt for thousands of years. The, the ancient Egyptian population was brown and black. And the Greeks came in 300 BC and they started to intermarry with the local population. And then the Romans came and ruled from 70 BC until they were con conquered by the Arabs and kicked out by the Arabs in the seventh century. And these people intermarried with the Egyptian Copts. And, and, and they, made the, they, made, they made the pigmentation of the, of the Egyptians, the Copts, much lighter because of this intermarriage with Europeans. Well, uh, what do you think? Again, I want to show that um, embedded in this uh, society is still uh, issues about whether or not black people created great civilizations in the past. History shows that they have. It is the truth. And but this brother who came in here who wanted to share his Africanness uh, was told that he had to be white. In fact, he wrote a book. I want <laughs> I want to show you. This brother was serious. Okay, uh, he was persecuted by the school system that he's in in Detroit. Um, he holds doctor's degree. He was born in in in, in Egypt. Uh, he declared his Africanness uh, uh, to the dismay of the Arabs and white Americans that came in contact with it. And he was, he's adamant to this day about his being a black Egyptian. For some reason, that dialogue does not want to be uh, uh, brought out. You know, that's why they're still doing CRT and, and that kind of information kind of goes against the, na the, the narratives. I want to show you uh, uh, two words to emphasize what I'm talking about. Now, this is an interesting word. It's a German word, pure German. It's called Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. And what that word means, it means the ideas of the age. Whatever age you're in, what's the idea that permeates that society, that age? And what Zeitgeist, what idea permeates the age since enslavement still exists today? that black people did not create any kind of civilization, that the Egyptians were some white, off-white people or others, regardless of what the evidence and the history, historical documentation is. And we're still dealing with that and how 
people receive us as black men and women in this country that were ignorant, where come from savages, the same zeitgeist established for Native Americans, you know, in order to take their land. That's the, that's the, uh, so remember that word as I talk about this uh, topic about whether the Egyptians were uh, black uh, Africans, which they most definitely were. The next thing I want you to bring in context of this discussion, I want these things to build to prove my point and to show that Kevin Hart uh, was quite correct when he made that statement. There's blowback for it, shouldn't, but the zeitgeist still permeates this of, of, of black people not being uh, given anything to the world or humanity, even though we're the oldest representation of human kind. The earliest man would come from Central Africa. The earliest civilizations came out of Africa. But right now, everything comes from Greek and Roman in Western culture and Western thought. And that arrogance, that zeitgeist that they go, cling to is being threatened by the truth that is coming out since the you know, mid-60s uh, with uh, black history uh, classes and black education, you know. Uh, Doc, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis is a good example of how they're trying to fight that. But implicit bias, the zeitgeist <clears throat> bring out implicit bias, okay? It's a, it's a form of bias that occurs automatically and unintentionally that nevertheless affects judgments, decisions, and behaviors. Research has shown implicit bias can pose a barrier to recruiting and retaining a diverse scientific workforce. In other words, if your zeitgeist tells you that, that black people did, did not um, create anything that they've been saying since enslaving us to justify that inhumane uh, a system that was created, if your zeitgeist say that uh, black people are not smart enough to fly planes or not smart enough to be police officers, as the as the, uh, the ideas of the age was up until just recently in, in, in American history, since the 1964 Civil Rights Act, it's just only around 60 years ago, but for the previous hundreds of years uh, of, of scholarship, they said we didn't create anything and we were separated and everything was about separating us from the dominant white Western culturally produced white people that didn't come into existence until 1789. I mean, 17, yeah, 1781, but, but that's another show we'll talk about. All right, let's go to the next slide. I got, I got, now, why am I showing you this office of budget management, OBM? You might, some of you are familiar with it about the budget and you know and the debt ceiling and all those things yeah they control that but they but do you know that the obm is uh responsible for how they categorize races in america when you see a form that you fill out whether you're black native american blah 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 it is under that directive directive 15 and it defines white as a person having origins in any of the original peoples of europe north africa or the Middle East. First of all, the original people of North Africa were not white. Again, this, this, this OBM was established in 1970. What was the zeitgeist of that time about black people in 1970, 1960, uh, and, and, and uh, decades prior to that, okay? They would, this, so I want you to understand that the implicit bias is in the systems or the Middle East, that's a political term that came out in the 1950s. But yet we have a government agency and the, the OBU, o, o, OBM is responsible for all, managing all the executive branch systems in the executive branch. You got the, the judicial branch, you got the legislative branch, and you got the executive, executive branch. And the OBU is the one that manage all the executive branch system. So every form that you fill out under the auspices of the, the, the uh, executive branch of the United States government is managed by the OBU. And every form that you filled out to define yourself is managed by, and implicitly in that, uh, in, in their uh, uh, mission statement, which this comes from, um, they define white as North Africa and Middle East. Totally bogus, totally wrong, implicit bias. I didn't say it was consciously done, but it's there. And 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 that brother, uh, Hef, Dr. Hefty, had to deal with that based on that that information. Let's go on real quick. Next one. 
Now, I want to, Dr. Hefty comes from uh, Egypt, okay? And they're telling him that this white people. The OBM, uh, o, o, OBM says that uh, if you're from North Africa, which is Egypt, that's a picture that I took when I was going down the Nile and I go to that temple there, uh, the island of Chile uh, in Egypt, uh, down along the Nile. I'm not, I didn't uh, put this picture up you so you can look at the, the, uh, <laughs> the temple. I want you to look at that little boat right there. It's driven by Egyptians who work, who, who lived in that country, who, who's there. Let's go to the next guy. Okay, according to the OBM, Office of the Budget Management, if he, this individual from Egypt, just like Dr. Hefni, was trying to get his American citizenship, according to that definition of white, he would have to be, he would have to define himself as white. That's why Dr. Hefni wrote that book. That's why the Egyptians are still crazy when they tell Dr. Do, 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 uh, Brother uh, Hart that the Egyptians were, were not black. This is, cra this is the zeitgeist that still exists in the mind of people today that these are egyptians look at them do they look white but by paperwork they would have to define themselves as white and they would have to live in some land called the middle east which does not exist or some area uh, uh, in, in northern in the, called north africa they're always trying to take away from us and those ancient ancestors who built the pyramids who built all these things long before even um, uh, uh, Cleopatra, okay, thousands of years ago, the Egyptians looked like them. They still exist. They still walk around, just like Native Americans are still around today. Are there, uh, you know, are we claiming the Indian mounds or the great temples uh, in, in in Mexico or, or or all the different great monuments that still exist for? that was created by uh, Native people hundreds and hundreds of years before they were Europeans. But do you see them w being represented all over the uni United States? No, you see a white European always at the dominant place. The same thing going on in Egypt with the Arabs, okay? And Dr. Hefty had to pay the price for that. That's why I'm doing this show, to show you visual evidence that these people in Elephantine, Okay, Kumumbo, all these cities have black people. They exist. The same ones that have been around since the time of the, of the, of the great temples who look like that. They're just not in charge anymore. Just like Native Americans are not in charge of the United States, but they still exist. Let's go on. I was told about two or three years ago, I was, I was having one of the discussions, just, I, I, uh, it wasn't in any lecture or anything. I was just talking about, like I always try to do, talk about Egypt. And I said it was in Africa, this African country. And whoa, I was stopped by a well-educated black man who was miseducated, I should say. And he said, well, Egypt is in the Middle East or whatever the definition that he was taught in school or miseducated. But I want to show you, what continent do you see that red area? That's Egypt. Uh, is it in Asia? Is it in the South or uh, North America? Is it in Europe? Like they, they're trying to show with their miseducation of black folks and other people in our education system to this day. No, it's in Africa. It's an African country of the 54 countries that, uh, that were created with, actually in, in the 1890s, 1880s, I mean. It's, a, it's an African country. And they saw themselves coming from the south <clears throat> or upper Egypt, okay, with going to the south. So now we know where Egypt is. Let's, let's go on. This is one of the greatest African thinkers of the 20th century. Many of you might have heard of him. His name is uh, Sheikh Anta Diop, okay? What made him so, he's, a, he's what, you, what you would call a polymath. Polymath is somebody who's brilliant in multiple different, different disciplines. He was trained in the Sorbonne in France. He's from Senegal. He has uh, Dakar, the capital of Senegal. At the University of Senegal, uh, they, they renamed it uh, Dr. Sheikh under Diop University, Diop University. Um, he wrote these books, among many books, but if you want to know about the origin of the ancient Egyptians, these are the books that you need to have in your, in, in, in your library. Uh, civilization or barbarism, you know, 
But one of the things that he brought to the table, in 1974, UNESCO uh, got together all the great uh, experts in Egyptology, anthropology, linguistics, and it, it was called the Cairo Symposium in 1974. This is 2023. <laughs> in 1974, him and another African, the only two black people in the conference from everybody around the world, UNESCO, if you don't know, is the one who makes all the uh, UNESCO sites and determine what should be saved temples all over the planet, and it's part of the UN. It's the Un United Nations uh, Education and Science Commission, okay? They put this symposium, and he threw 11 different disciplines, proved that the Egyptians linguistically, iconography, that means the vases and stuff like that, and he did one test that showed this fact that they look like me and him and many of you who, look, who are looking at this show. Let's go to the next slide. This one is called, uh, this, is the, this is the test that I'm talking about. It's called the melanin dosage test. How many of you heard of this? Brother <clears throat> Diop created this test. He is a biochemist, okay? He had his own carbon dating lab in Senegal. It is in the 60s, in the 50s, okay? But he created this chemical test that proved without a doubt that the skin color of the ancient Egyptian, not the Greek Egyptians that came after Alexander invaded and all the Syrians invaded or the other groups invaded or even the Arabs invaded. This is how you do that test real, real quick. Okay. The test involves come kind of halfway down the, the test involved the acquisition of specimens consisted of a few square millimeters of mummified skin. So you get the mummy of the ancient, uh, Africans, which were then coated with a, a chemical ethyl benzoate and exposed to natural or ultraviolet light. This pr procedure then renders that melanin in granules in that skin in a fluorescent way. That way you could look at look look under a microscope and look for these fluorescent uh, granules, which were the melanin, and then you could count them. If there was a high uh, melanin content, there should be a high a lot of fluorescence. This was proven back in the 1970s and the 1960s. Why are we still arguing about the about the 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 the, the phenotype of the ancient Egyptian African? Why are these Arabs today still getting on brother heart when you have these tests that can be done right now that can prove by looking at the skin uh, 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 of them taking a piece of their skin, doing this procedure, and count the mel. If you have a lot of melanin, you're gonna have a lot of those fluorescent granules. If you don't have anything, say for somebody from Norway, not knocking Norwegians, but would they have a lot of um, a melanin in their skin from that? Okay, and he done it on cots or, or mummies of the ancient ones, and showed that they were black Africans. Let's go on. <clears throat> Again, if you don't, I don't want you to believe me. But let's re, let's read the other other scholars. I showed you some black a black scholar. Let's go with some white scholars of uh, the 1800s. Uh, Dr. Hefney said that the the racism of the of the uh, of the system of the zeitgeist of the system when he was in that video was talking about the 1700s scholars and the 1800s scholars what he was talking about. But there were some scholars who talk, spoke the truth, and this is one of them. He wrote a book called Anacalypsis. I got the two volumes in my library as we speak. And what, this is what he said after 30, 20 or 30 years putting this book together. I have found the black complexion or something relating to it whenever I have approached the origin of nations. Not a particular nation, the origin of nations. We talk about Japan, China, all these nations because African people, when humankind started spreading throughout the continents the original people were Africans, were melanated. Due to environmental changes, you have all the diversities of, 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 uh, of complexion, but the original people in Central Africa, where, the, where the, hum, the earliest human remains have been found going back millions of years, started in Africa. So of course they traveled the, the earth. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, this is another another uh, European called Con uh, Volney. He said Constantine Volney. He left 
for Egypt in 1783 because he was a scholar. Scholar means leisure. A person who was a scholar is a person who was, had the money. Okay, Darwin was a scholar because he had the money to go, uh, you know, uh, on the Beagle and travel all the world. He had to find a job. This is another a Frenchman <clears throat> who wrote a book that was very popular in 1791, The Rules of Empire. And on, on page 179 of Ruben, uh, 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 Ruins of Ivy, he said, how is it that a people now forgotten discovered while others were yet barbarians, the elements of the arts and the sciences? Uh, a race now rejected from the society for their stable, stable skin and frizzled hair, founded on the study of the law, founded the study of the of the laws of nature, those civil and religious systems which still govern the universe. He's talking about the people that were enslaved during his time, the zeitgeist. He he spoke to truth, not the zeitgeist of the time, not the idea that was appropriated to 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 justify what was going on for economic reasons, not for scientific reasons. And we're still being, that's the foundation of our educational system to this day. That's why when a brother like uh, 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 Kevin Hart said that the African people were black or Dr. Hefty said that I am a black man, we get this pushback. We get uh, Governor DeSantis saying that we're not gonna teach uh, black history because they don't want you to read this. Let's go on. I got about two minutes, but I'll continue the next show. This is another uh, brother. Uh, this is a brother, Dr. Finch. Uh, he was uh, a medical doctor and in charge of a, uh, a section in uh, at uh, 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 what was it? Uh, at uh, at a medical school. Uh, I, I, I'll get it in a minute. It it became clear to Wallace Budge. Wallace Budge was the preeminent. Uh, Egyptologists of the 1920s, the early 20th century, that everything about ancient Egypt could be understood only by reference to Africa. Okay, there was nothing fundamentally Asiatic about the Egyptian culture. In 1920, in his massive erudite Egyptian hieroglyphic dictionary, which this bunch wrote, reserving, reversing a hundred years trend <coughs> and his own early opinion, classified Egyptian as African rather than Semitic language. That, that is an African system of speech, that the people who spoke it were African. This is, again, what we have to deal with. That's why I said you, you do have people who spoke the truth. The, the ideas of the age has changed. Now, I'm going to stop here because I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to continue on the next um, show. But this book here is another book that you should have by Sheikh Dr. Anta Dia, okay? Civilization or Barbarism. I want you to understand that the Greeks, the uh, true European scholars, knew who the e Egyptians were. Sheikh Anta Dia proved it by many different disciplines in 1974. Yet why are you still arguing about who the Egyptians are? It's not no coincidence. There's a reason they're fighting tooth and nail because their whole foundation was built on a lie. But on that, on that note, I'll continue on the next show. Peace, hotep, bye-bye.